I've been traveling with my Positron LT for the last six months, taking it to and from work and school multiple times a week. Unpacking, repacking, unfolding, refolding. I've put in a lot of miles with my printer and clocked over 200 hours printing, but transportation has consisted mostly of short commutes. I wanted to demonstrate that the LT can really travel, and I had the perfect opportunity during a holiday family vacation. The first step in this process was getting through airport security as a carry-on. I was nervous that a homemade jumble of wires and metal would look suspicious, but the Positron doesn't include anything explicitly forbidden, and I made sure sharp items were placed in a check bag. Of course, I could take the easy way out and put the whole printer in a check bag, but I had a few extra plans in store on the way to the cruise that wouldn't have been possible if I'd done that. So, get through TSA it was. And miraculously, nobody even gave it a second glance. I was frankly surprised about that, but we had made it, and now it was on to bigger and better things. The next step was claiming a first-ever award for something that had never crossed a normal person's mind. All right, so... Arrived at the gate. Got the positron right here. Side quest number one was being the first airline passenger to 3D print in an airport. Everything went smoothly. Clipper booted up and accessible via mobile hotspot. We were ready to roll. And then, you guys wondered what happens when a print fails on a positron. This is it. A little cleanup with a nylon toothbrush and we were good to go. The issue was a Z offset that needed tuning and a winter draft from an open jet bridge door. As this was going on, I'd attracted the attention of a few people who wanted to know what this weirdo was doing on the floor of an airport with a homemade robot. Met this awesome guy. Forgot his name, so I'll call him Phil. Phil told me he was a sailor, and he used the 3D printer to make replacement parts for his boat. He told me a portable 3D printer was exactly what he needed when he was away from shore for long periods of time. Cool. By now, time was getting short. Boarding was about to begin, but I just needed to successfully start a print and got it. Good enough. Next, the Positron boarded its first plane, and we were on our way to Miami. My next goal was the most ambitious of them all, and if it had succeeded, I probably would have ended up changing the name of this video. I wanted to see if a Positron could print on a commercial airplane, and evidently not. The AC outlets on commercial planes are all current limited. According to multiple online sources, the tripping point is somewhere around 75 watts. That probably isn't enough to run a print unless I leave the bed off. But starting up the printer shouldn't require that much power, so why doesn't it turn on? Doing a bit more research, it seems that the answer might be inrush current. User Agent L on Stack Exchange claims that airplane breakers are much faster than those used in ground-based electrical systems. And this Positron LT's PSU draws a whopping 30 amps on startup. So, no bueno. Finally, we had reached Miami, Florida, but we had one final stop and bucket list item to check off before the Positron would be sailing to the Bahamas. It was time to be the first vacationer to 3D print in an Airbnb. This was probably the first semi-practical use of the whole journey. I can picture someone on a business trip taking the Positron in their Airbnb. I know this face model has been printed too many times, but I wanted something that would fit in with their table decor. Look at that. Blends right in. I left it behind as a gift. A good night's sleep, and the next day, the Positron LT would be cruising to the Bahamas. that was fun, but let's get back to business. I started with the Positron printing in my stateroom. I guess this counted, but it didn't feel any more special than 3D printing in a hotel or even a bedroom. There wasn't even a window view to prove I was on a boat. Time to draw some attention. I headed up to the Lido deck to get a better view and maybe harass a few people. Found a perfect table right next to an outlet with a great ocean view, but before I had been up there for more than a few minutes, I was already drawing plenty of stairs. It wasn't long before people started asking questions. <laughs> Well, we got some good shots with the ocean in the background and the people on the ship, but I wanted to take it a bit further, up to the top floor. So what was the point of this video? Was it just a publicity stunt? Well, I definitely wanted to claim a lot of random firsts for the Positron LT. If you think you got to any of these before me, feel free to post the video with a timestamp or other evidence to prove it. I also want to encourage community participation. If you're out there and you built a Positron or are planning on building one, I encourage you to take it to some exotic places and post your experience. Part of the value of putting this video together was being able to interact with many people from different walks of life who were interested in the project. I talked to 30 or 40 individuals while filming, and it was fascinating hearing the different uses and ideas they had for a Positron. But beyond simply drawing attention to the Positron project, I wanted to show that this printer can really go anywhere, more than just simple commutes to and from work. It can get through TSA, board a plane, and even take a cruise to the Bahamas. It is a truly portable 3D printer. For me, this just emphasizes the genius of Craylin's original design and of the many other engineers who have and are participating in this incredible project. This is something new, something unique that you really won't see anywhere else. The convention-shattering design of the Positron makes it one of the most cutting-edge recent developments for FDM 3D printers. 
and I hope that makes you excited.